Let's do some Python on hardware. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Well, we already had the biggest news. Well, there's even more. Oh, goodness. So Bill was on our show and tell, and he talked about the uh, Freedom, Freedom Wing. Wing, and a uh, couple things. Uh, Steve, who we're going to show a couple, uh, maybe like 30 or 40 seconds of the video. The video is about four minutes altogether. Um, but just to give you an idea of, of what folks are saying, uh, this is from Steve. Steve said, I'm so glad so many are excited for this controller. For those of you in the press writing about this, want to underscore 2020 brought us the year when someone can drive their wheelchair up to an Xbox and plug it in. Unimaginable before now, game changing. That's and, so cool. And, and so sad that it took this long. <laughs> well, no time to, no, you know, the no time like the present. Um, it's never too late to do good. So uh, Bill said, hey man, just to be clear, we use Adafruit Featherwing standard, hence the name Freedom Wing. This device can become a mouse or any other controller just to change its open source Python code. So this is open source software. It's open source hardware. It combines all the things that we wanted uh, to see with Feather, people taking it in places we never imagined. Portable, small projects. Yeah. And just to put this in context, if you are in a power wheelchair, you have a joystick that you run your life with. Yeah. You're literally, it's taking you places. <laughs> yeah. Um, the idea that you can participate in gaming and participate in other things you with the same joystick that you're so good now. at. Yeah, especially since some people like they have special joysticks for their you know their, their usability and their range of motion. And so like having to use a different joystick for gaming doesn't make a lot of sense. You should use the thing that you're so used to. And just the idea that this wheelchair, this power wheelchair that you're in, is now something that you can incorporate to all the other parts of your life and be part of something like a gaming community and be able to have something that's not this proprietary you know, expensive thing that's impossible for you to obtain. Um, it's only like seven or eight bucks. Uh, so here's just the first snippet of the video. Um, please do check out atmakers.org to watch the whole thing and uh, look at the coverage on our site, adafruit.com slash press. We have the first link on there right now is a link to all the links that has all the th I different- I know, I'm so glad they got press for yeah. it. Yeah, so uh, Engadget, Gizmodo, Verge, like every, every place that keeps track of gaming, um, this was really neat to see them say this and put this in the spotlight because we are what we celebrate and there's so many good pieces about this including the high school kids that make these at their own free time along with AT makers to get these to as many people as possible. So um, here's a little bit of a vid. I've been working on having a way that people with disabilities who use power wheelchairs would be able to plug in their wheelchair to an Xbox since I started my work at Able Gamers nearly 15 years ago. What's very amazing out of that is I met an amazing man named Bill who is with AT Makers. And together the two of us collaborated on this amazing device where, as you can see here, we're going to plug my wheelchair, my own personal wheelchair, into my Xbox and I'm going to control Rocket League straight up uh, with no adaptations. It's just the device plugging into an Xbox adaptive controller and into the Xbox and it's going to work like magic. Hi, I'm Bill. Okay, so watch the rest of the video and more at AT Makers. Next up, there are some, uh, I feel like I'm like the, the TMZ of electronics. So here's some, well, it's actually on Instagram.com. It's like paparazzi slash pics. <laughs> um, this is the latest photos and more of the badge that's also a wearable, it's like a watch, that you'll see at, Os uh, at Open Hardware Summit. This is made by Oshpark, Spark Funds, making them up. DigiKey's a sponsor. And the thing that I like about this the most, of course, is it runs CircuitPython. Yay! So Alex and Michael and Drew are bringing up the board. Um, you can see they've got some display stuff going on. And it's just another cool example if you put something useful out there, like CircuitPython, that people can use to build hardware, then it'll probably get used. So, nice cool work. Stuff. Yep. All right, looking good. OK, uh, next up, from the community in the world of Python on hardware. This is cool. This is a cute little maze ball game that you can tilt. It uses a TFT gizmo and drew, driven by the accelerometer. Code is up on GitHub and more. Nina is doing a cool series of videos and projects. This is a uh, screenshot from the Twitch screen, uh, Twitch stream, uh, working on a CircuitPython Pi portal called the Expovert badge. Um, basically, if your social battery is charged up enough, it'll say, come talk to me. If it's not, it's like, hey, 
don't want to talk right now. Mm. Very useful. Very useful. This is from Codesmart.dk. This is a conductive fabric tape circuit playground express and circuit python musical instrument on fabric. Organic. This is uh, from James Bowman um, from the Inside X Camera Labs. It's one of my favorite newsletters. Talks about some things with Game Duino. Uh, and there was a highlight in this newsletter that I thought that was really good. So the people that buy these like really advanced DIY gaming systems and things, the hardest part is writing games for it. And so James has been thinking about what, what can he do to, to make it easier. And uh, the pull quote here is uh, a little piece I wanted to read. But what about people who only want a menu system or a temperature display or a photo frame or show a kid how to make Pong? All those people want to write a minimum amount of code, get the satisfaction of something that looks good, and move on. Circuit Python is part of that. It's much more beginner friendly than Arduino environment. It's just easier to use. And this isn't a ding on Arduino. It is just Arduino really, is really powerful. Yeah. Circuit Python's beginner friendly. And that's exactly what we like to hear. So um, if you're curious about this, you can go to um, the X Camera website, and it's uh, excamera.com. It is spelled like it sounds. And check that out. And uh, James has a very insightful newsletter. Super cool. Um, Lucien was working on getting the um, kitten bot working yep. with CircuitPython, so we got that done. And he's testing out Pong, or uh, Snake. Particle announced that they're discontinuing Particle Mesh. However, they have a guide, and for only, what, like 11 bucks, you can have a fantastic CircuitPython power board because it works and it's yep. feather it even compatible. has a uh, QSpy flash on it, so it's actually pretty much ready to go. If you have a Xenon... The NR52840 board they have, it's it's really nice. It's it's jam-packed full of stuff. Um, you'll need to reprogram the bootloader, so you need to have a J-Link or some other kind of SWD programming jig, and they, they have a tutorial on how to do that. But once you update the bootloader, um, so you can use our UF2 drag-and-drop bootloader, it's really easy to install CircuitPython. Yeah. Next up, this was a cool project. Uh, this was on Hackster, and it made the rounds in a few other places. This is the rubber duck project, and this is when you plug in a device and it does a bunch of keyboard stuff. Yeah, but uh, that's a rubber out, snake. You can't. Yeah, <laughs> now it's a rubber snake. Uh, turns out, um, Circuit Python and Circuit Playground Express is a great way to make that project. So. And it's a great way to start because you can use the HID um, capabilities of Circuit Python, parse scripts very easily. So that the t the guide's really nice and shows the power of Circuit Python. Feather Tripler, dot stars, and Circuit Python. The code was just posted if you want to make something cool like this. Check out the link some more in the newsletter. Um, we also added another board to circuitpython.org slash downloads. This is the Feather. Blue Fruit Sense. Yeah. Coming soon. We'll talk about also doing new products. OK. Uh, next up, these headlines write themselves. Feather takes flight at SparkFun. This is the SparkFun Thing Plus Quick Shield. It's a feather wing. And it is... Um, Look at how handy this is. You get four quick connectors, and we've got tons of sensors that are compatible. Yeah, and it's part of uh, many of the boards that SparkFun has. So if you go to SparkFun, search for Feather, or even CircuitPython. Uh, they're, they're getting on the CircuitPython train. Choo-choo. Snakes on a train. Um, and uh, also check out our awesome dash Feather list on GitHub, where we just added this one, as well as some others. Cool projects and more. This is uh, Code and Solder's I.O. project. It's a Adafruit... IO project plus a Pi badge plus NeoPixels plus Mini MQTT and Circuit Python, and there's a color picker and it uses all the Adafruit hardware and IO all communicating together. Um, we posted up a little bit about Discord and Slack, and I wanted to mention this because I think there's a lot of people that tune into our uh, shows because some of them are partners, some of them are in the community, some of them are competitors, some of them are uh, coopetition friends, you know, like, you know, like I like to think of it as like skateboarding sometimes, like yeah. companies and even people are like, hey, I got a trick, I got a trick. So um, it looks like the open source communities in particular started out trying to use Slack as their communication tool and like us uh, are, are now on Discord. Um, I really like Discord. I've been invited to a bunch of Slacks and I've logged in twice and then never yeah, again. Yeah, and I think the reason is when you're using Slack, it's for business and there's not moderation tools because it's assuming that you're working at yeah. an enterprise and you're an employee. Yeah. So um, we've seen there's there's a few um, really good Discord Python communities. There's a few really good Discord electronics communities. So we did a post that had the ones that we kind of 
keep track of. And also, you can just easily flip between the different servers and you get notified on one. It, yeah. Discord is designed to be like, oh yeah, you're on a bunch of servers, but like you're all, you're going, you're jumping between the two, yeah. where Slack is like, it's all separate and it's like a little silo. Yeah, they do have threading on the messages and I know that's very useful, but that's the only thing that I'd say that's, that's, that would hold you back. Yeah. Um, also, the, the cost of Slack when you have a very large community, if you're trying to use a community tool, it's into the tens of thousands of dollars, or it could be, yeah. for the number of messages you want to save. There's a lot of things that go into that where Discord, um, you generally can, can use it um, at pretty low cost for, especially, we have 16,000 people. And uh, we're able to, to have our own server and kind of run it the way we want. And we have vanity URLs and we have server boost. So it's, it's working out well for us. But if you're curious about running a community or some type of ha hacker space, maker space, but online, uh, check out the Discord article that we have on our site. Mm -hmm. But also check out the list of other places. If you like the CircuitPython community on Discord, there's a bunch of other communities. Pimeroni has one. Evil Mad Scientist has one. There's uh, Python Arduino educators. Arduino has one. Arduino has one. In the Arduino one, there's even a help with Adafruit stuff. Yeah. Because um, a lot of people who use Arduino just happen to use Adafruit stuff. Yeah, there's so a check bunch. That out. There's a bunch. Okay. Um, some other news. This is cool. Kevin was over at BET. It's the uh, educational summit over in the UK and notice that there's a micro bit bit adapter. this is like TMZ for electronics this is the Sphero so Sphero now is uh, acquired merged with little bits so this is the Sphero little bit micro bit adapter and if you have a micro bit you would be able to use little bits that's good news for us bits, we bits, have bits. clue and you'll probably be able to use little bits with clue with this bit so they say it's coming out in spring we'll know soon I can't wait this weekend, Scott's going to be speaking at Pi Cascades. There's um, a lot of activity and cool talks. If you're in the Portland area, check it out. There is also a CircuitPython meetup. It's at Artist Asylum. That is in... Uh, it's, Boston. It's in Boston. Cambridge. Yeah, I was going to say... Somerville. I was going to say, it's in Massachusetts for sure. Um, so that's February 12th. Uh, Lucien is hosting a CircuitPython meetup February 12th. 5 to 7 p.m. at RS Asylum's Makerspace in Somerville, Massachusetts. As we mentioned before, PyCon is coming up. Every single person there is getting a clue. Oh my goodness, you're getting a clue. You're getting a clue. Look that, under your chairs. Y'all got clues. Here's those sirens. That's the cops saying that, you can't you can't give away that many clues. That's the free clue siren. <laughs> Patent pending. Hong um, Kong. Also at PyCon, uh, we're keeping track of some of the talks that have got accepted. Um, if you're interested in using Python and plant technology, there is a talk about that already. And that is it for the Python on Hardware News this week. There's a blinka, lot. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Okay. You get a clue. You get a clue.